Hello. In this activity, we are going over differentiators. And in terms of a circuit topology, we are working still with the non with the inverting, pardon me, configuration. And what we are doing is that we are replacing R in with the capacitor. So we input V output R and C. So that's our step one in terms of a skeleton or circuit topology. As we have done in previous videos, something I like you to get used to doing is to, before doing any math, with your understanding of resistors, capacitors, inductors, and the devices that you are working with, see you can figure out how the circuit is going to work. So, qualitative analysis. At least in terms of a frequency response for a frequency dependent circuit. So, that, what do we have for omega? As the frequency, if the frequency is low, let's say at zero, what do we have for the capacitor? The impedance of the capacitor is one over j omega c. So this is going to be infinity, or the capacitor is going to be an open. And so the circuit that we got looks like this. The output is just going to be zero. As you can see, V output is equal to zero. Why is that? Well, you have negative feedback, a path from the output back to the negative input. And what is the operation amplifier going to try to do? Make sure that V, the N, the inverting voltage, equals the non inverting voltage. Meaning we have V out A times V, V pli minus V N. If this is 10 to the 6, these are going to need to be very close together in order for the output not to saturate, say, to be plus or minus 10 volts, in the order of 10 to the minus 5, so they are very close together. So with that, we know that the low frequencies, the output is going to be zero or the gain is zero. A high frequencies, as omega increases, the impedance for the capacitor is going to decrease, this is going to go zero. So in the limit, this is going to be short, a short circuit. This is the circuit that you got. Well, you just got yourself something that looks like this, right? And if you recall, if you had a resistor here, Ri, this is an inverting amplifier, meaning the output was, would be minus Rf over Ri times the input. Now, this keeps going down in this case, as you are increasing in frequency, right? This is turning towards zero. What is happening here to the output? It becomes very large, right? And so, ideally, it will become infinity. In reality, because we have to power up this operation amplifier, is going to saturate. So this is also it's a circuit that has a problem. Uh, a high frequencies, and um, even if you do not get to, to that level, the, the circuit is going to have the issue of amplifying high frequencies, or probably it's going to amplify noise. Let's do the analysis. I'm going to do the analysis in the time domain. I mentioned in previous videos, when you have uh, capacitors, and inductors in your circuit, 
because the current voltage characteristics involve derivatives and integrals, the equations that you end up are differential equations or integral differential equations. They are manageable if you just have an RC circuit or an RL circuit or an RLC circuit, but as you increase the number of nodes and the complexity at the number of, of elements, it just becomes much more difficult mathematically. And that's why we don't do the analysis in the time domain. I'll do it in this case for illustration purposes. So let's do the analysis. How do we analyze any operational amplifier using the ideal assumptions? Well, two steps. I recommend that we do nodal analysis at the most uh, complex node that you have. If of, by that I mean of the inverting or the non-inverting input. In the inputs to the operational amplifier, select the one that is more complex. One of them is down to, to zero. Pretty easy to determine. Uh, the inverting one does have a network. So we apply Kirchhoff current loader. I always assume that all the currents are leaving in the node. And so I have this current, I have this current, I have this current, right? So the current leaving, I'm going to call this a VM for inverting, for negative or inverting input, VN minus VI over, oh, what am I doing here? This is not a resistor. What is the current going through a capacitor? It is C, V, voltage across the capacitor, right? Which is Vn minus Vi, Vt, so that's the current, plus current here is Vn minus V output over resistance, plus the current entering into the operation amplifier which under the ideal conditions, we assume that the operational amplifier does not draw any current, the input impedance is infinity, etc. So that's zero equals to zero. Again, what are we doing here? We are adding currents. This current here, this current. This one is a resistor current, so it's just Ohm's law, different in potential over resistance. In this one, you need to look at the current voltage characteristics for a capacitor, where the current is proportional to the capacitance and the rate of change of the voltage, the derivative of the voltage across the capacitor. Okay, so what do we do next? We look at the other node, and typically, if you have a more complex circuit, you need to apply nodal analysis again. In this case, though, it is trivial. The non-inverting input, the VP, is equal to the inverting input, and actually, as I should say, BP is equal to zero. And then, that's it, right? And do we have negative feedback? Do we have a path from the output back to the inverting input? Yes, therefore, VN is equal to VP is equal to zero, and we can substitute in the previous equation. We have here, we have here. So what do we get? C, V, differential of the input voltage, Vt, there was a minus there, and over here, equals V output over R. Or the output voltage, V output, is equal to minus RC derivative of the input. And this is why this circuit is called a differentiator. Your output. It's a scale version of the derivative of the input. Now, uh, we are also asked to do the frequency response. And so let's go ahead and analyze the circuit in the S domain. Now, we, in the previous activity, there's a video where we analyze already a more general circuit, right? The general inverting amplifier with two impedances. CI and CF. 
And what did we found? We found that h of s is equal to minus cf over c input. The impedance in the feedback over the impedance of the input. And so what do we have here? The feedback. So we have um, R, F, and at one over SC, and this is equal to minus S, R, C. So that's our transfer function. Now, as a reminder, that's in the S domain. We can find any output voltage, H of S, by multiplying the transfer function times the Laplace transform of the input. So for any input, you do the Laplace transform, you multiply, you get the output in the S domain. If you want to find the output in the time domain, you do the inverse Laplace transform of the output in the S domain, which if you do the inverse Laplace transform, you get actually the V out. R R C is the same R C here, and multiplication times S in the S domain is derivative in the time domain. So we got the same result as expected. On five, we are going to do the frequency response. Now, if we were only interested in how this was going to behave for sinusoidal signals, we could already have done the analysis for 1 over j omega c or, or j omega l. Now, in, if you have the analysis in the s domain, h of s, and you evaluate it for real frequencies, s equal j omega, you get the frequency response, it enables you to do body plots, and it enables you to see how the circuit behaves for as a function of frequency for sinusoidal inputs. And that's very important because really any signal can be decomposed into a sum of sinusoid once you do the Fourier analysis. Having said that though, it is important to remark that the previous result that we have here is more general because the input you can find the output for things that are not sinusoidal. You can find, well, if the input is an impulse, for instance, you're getting the impulse response. If the input is a step, how this is going to behave. If an input, so you can do the Laplace transform of any input and see what the output is going to be. Going back to the frequency response, what do we get? Minus J omega RC, uh, or the magnitude, J omega RC. And how does this look? Well, this is something that is proportional to omega, meaning, I'm going to plot here the frequency response. We have a frequency response that looks like, to do it as a function of omega, something like this when you are plotting it in dBs, okay? This is in dBs. Uh, it goes up at 20 dBs per decade. So this is my magnitude, okay? Log scale. In dBs, the, my, when, we have one over RC, right? At omega one over RC, this is going to be equal to one in linear or zero in dB, you see? So this will be, everybody says that if omega is equal one over RC, I will get one there or zero in the dB scale. So that means that if I'm 10 times that, 10 times one over RC, I went 20 dBs up there, okay? Or a per decade, I increase it by a factor of 10. 
Now, do we have a problem? Comment on the circuit limitations. Yeah, we have a significant limitation. Look at how this, this curve is going up. And so for high frequencies, frequencies over here, we are amplifying a lot. And so one issue that you have is in the very high frequencies, we have noise. And so this may be just a noise amplifier. I mean, it may be very small. You are amplifying it a lot. And it may be that you, even, even if you don't saturate, right? You may saturate, but bottom line, you are picking up all this high frequency noise that is it's being amplified. What we're going to want to do, that is the next part of the activity, is to go from a differentiator, an ideal differentiator, which has this response, this linear response, to one where we limit the gain at high frequencies. Right? We want to do something like this. I'm going to use a different color for that. We want to, so it's not keeps going up, but we do something like that. And that's just a high pass filter. We will have a corner frequency, a 3 dB frequency around there. And how do we do that is the topic of the next video. Thank you.